You know, you know, it's a Monday morning when uh, you go to turn on the microphone and then the button sticks and I was sitting here. Well, I wasn't hammering away at it. I mean, I, 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 you know, if I took my fist and smacked it, I suppose it might come on, but then it might not go back off, which would be inf- unfortunate as well. But I was sitting here punching the button and I'm watching Mr. Big Voice there as the time is winding down. One more hour of the program to go this morning. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Now, thank you for joining us. Still holding steady at 45, and it's raining, and it's raining steadily. Well, it's got to happen sometime, right? We'll we'll deal with it over the next couple of days, plus the uh, the potential of snow. I don't really believe that any of this snow is going to pile up in large amounts. It, the, the high temperature for tomorrow would certainly melt most of it away, but it'll be you know nasty and heavy and wet and not much fun to walk around in. I got a couple of things I wanted to mention here. Uh, Chris uh, Anderson uh, coming uh, by a little bit later from the Herod Center, out of course the College of Southern Idaho, talking about some of the things that will be going on at the museum over the course of the next month. He joins us the first Monday of every month to give us a, a rundown. But I do want to I do want to at least spend a few minutes on a couple of things. We were mainly, of course, uh, dealing in Idaho topics in the last hour, and I think that they were certainly top of the mind because, well, I mean, we are in Idaho. So, and I'm sitting here in a local chair and you can hear a lot of what I'm going to talk about now, probably on some other radio programs, the syndicated shows throughout the day. I get these calls from people off air that say, you know, you should have so-and-so on as a guest or this person on as a guest or that person on as a guest. And sometimes I've already had the people on as a guest. And number two, a lot of those very same people you can hear for the for the next 12 hours on the radio on all of the other syndicated shows that we have over and over and over again. But I guess if you want the reinforcement, it's a, it's a good thing. I, I have an email. i got to share this with you. Got this from a friend who found it at The Hill. The Hill is a newspaper out of Washington. Headline, Libya Embassy email warned Hillary Clinton not to emphasize video. What are they talking about? Well... Bradford Richardson, the reporter, says Hillary Clinton and other State Department officials were warned against saying that an anti-Muslim video contributed to the 2012 attacks on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya, a new email released on Friday reveals. Now, it says the email was released on Friday. This is from today's edition of The Hill. How many people actually got to hear this over the weekend? Because I'm not aware that this story has gotten much play over at MSDNC or CNN or CBS or ABC, uh, NBC. I'm not even sure that it's been in the New York Times or the Washington Post. As I say, it's usually buried, if it is, on page A17 below the fold in one of the bottom corners down there near the corrections. But this would go on to suggest that Hillary Clinton and her cohorts decided to continue to fudge and fib their way through the story after the uh, attacks in Benghazi, Libya. Now, media would like to tell you that this story is over with and done and, you know, just don't bring it up any longer because you've got an agenda, you right-wing meanie. Media was complicit in this story. Media pumped up this this whole, whole lie about the video of being responsible for the attack on our consulate, in which, again, four Americans died. I still remember a debate where Mitt Romney was on stage and he was up against Barack Obama and Romney started to bring up the terrorism aspect of all of this and Chris Matthews cut him off and said, it's, it's, the, it's about the tape. Everybody knows it's about the tape. Or video, I guess, is what he said. I'm likely paraphrasing. I just, I'm putting that back together from my elephantine memory. But there you have it. Media went along with the story because they wanted to reelect Barack Obama. They didn't like Mitt Romney. If indeed now we focus on the story and what really happened, it's not just Hillary Clinton who has some splaining to do. It's also going to be all of those folks at all of those major media outlets that help really to spread the lie. They are just propaganda outfits. They're not news outfits. Washington Examiner, one of your alternative sources for news in Washington, and across the country, has a headline today on an editorial, Clinton Cannot Tell the Truth. And the writer says, in her immediate post-Benghazi appearance on the Rachel uh, Rachel Maddow show, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton must have been feeling pretty good, like she could get away with anything. Perhaps that's why she went on television and lied about her husband's reasons for signing the Defense of Marriage Act, the 1996 bill that established the traditional definition of marriage for all federal government purposes. And there's some detail about that and explaining how she lied 
if you would actually go to the website, uh, I hope you're ambitious enough to do that. I read the examiner every day. But then the writer goes on to talk a little bit about the lie over the videotape when you get to Benghazi. And if you think about it, I mean, we could sit here and we could recite lies from Hillary Clinton going back into the 1990s. We, we could talk about when she claimed that she landed in uh, Bosnia under fire. And yet video then later surfaced of her walking around, greeting everybody, and no one was shooting at her. But she can't help herself. And yet media says, yeah, but you know, she's still so much nicer and sweeter than all of those Republicans. They, they want to cut spending, and that would be mean. Here we have, it says later, most disgustingly, Clinton commiserated with the father of Tyrone Woods, the Navy SEAL who was killed in the Benghazi compound, and vowed, quote, we will make sure that the person who made that film is arrested and prosecuted, unquote. The writer says it's worth stopping and considering again what she did. She looked into the eyes of a grieving father and told him a lie about the reason for his death. Standing in the presence of the caskets of all four Americans killed in Benghazi, Clinton commented on that attack and others in Egypt, Yemen, and Tunisia without drawing any distinction. Quote, we've seen rage and violence directed at American embassies over a horrible internet video that we had nothing to do with, unquote, she said. And meanwhile, our own embassy had been telling her from, from the top, don't use that, don't say that. And other leaders from that part of the world were saying this is not the case. And they still went ahead and constructed the lie because they wanted to drag Mr. Obama over the finish line. And you folks in mainstream media, you were there cheering all of that on. Over at Media Research Center, they have a column called Newsbusters. And then it mentions that Hillary Clinton was in New Hampshire and a man asked her about all of the lies. And the crowd literally gasped when they heard that. But the writer goes on to say, remember what happened... Uh, uh, now they're trying to identify the man. Media is looking to identify him and embarrass him and name him publicly. They didn't do that with the plant that was in the crowd in New Hampshire that asked Donald Trump a question and referred to the president as being a Muslim. Uh, well, again, double standard. And a writer here, by the way, who was writing at Newsbusters says, as we wrote in a book called Whitewash, try imagining this sentence in the early days of Watergate. Quote, federal officials insist that President Nixon is not a target of the investigation and that the only link is his coincidental association with E. Howard Hunt, unquote. Instead of Hillary Clinton gets that kind of a pass, but they wouldn't have said that about Richard Nixon. Then again, media didn't like him because, well, he was an anti-communist, and he put some of their fellow travelers out of business. 915, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And I have this from, uh, from The Hill as well this morning, Alexander Bolton, Headline, liberal fervor for gun control puts Senate candidates in tough spot. It says Democratic senators from liberal states such as Connecticut and Oregon are rolling out new gun control legislation in Washington. Some strategists warn, though, that the issue could alienate pro-gun voters in key states such as Colorado, New Hampshire, Florida, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. But the writer says it could be difficult for Democratic Senate candidates to keep the gun issue at bay given the rising fervor and the liberal base for action. Well, I'm surprised at the Hill this morning. They, they've just pointed out Hillary Clinton is a liar, and they pointed out that you've got uh, you've got a liberal base that is at odds with the party leadership. Hmm. Gee, it, well, maybe not so much at odds with the party leadership, maybe in lockstep. But if you have a Republican who doesn't agree with what the Republicans are doing, he's called an obstructionist. Over there, it's a, well, you know, they all know in liberal land and in media land that taking your guns away is a good thing. If, if the liberals, the liberal politicians want your firearms, then they can come door to door to collect them. It should work out very, very well. We have a caller joining us this morning. You're on the air on Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310 KLIX. And what's on your mind? All right, you want to try again. Make it double or nothing. 736 0300. That's 736 0300. My email is bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That is bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. So what you've got here is you've got a machine going on, the Democrats uh, and as well as their allies in media that are really trying to circle the wagons. The problem is after what happened last week at that debate, well, someone has pulled back the curtain and the American people actually got a good look at how this has actually been working. And everyone said for years we were just being paranoid and that we were being you know, unruly and that we just didn't know what was good for us. 
and that the media, we shouldn't question them because, you know, they're real smart. Until, of course, they showed their uh, their hands. They put their cards down on the table last week, and really all of a sudden that dissolved. I have this today, too, as well. It's speaking of uh, political parties, over at Washington Examiner, you've got a couple of guys writing a column, Rob Weisinger and Brian Robertson, and they are going after Ben Carson, and they are saying that Republicans who support Ben Carson are paranoid and that they really don't care about substance. They claim Mr. Carson offers no substance when he's campaigning, but that he just shoots off his mouth, and they say the problem is too many voters out there who aren't as smart as they are buy into his mouth shooting off and and don't pay any attention to Do you actually know anybody who votes that reads all of the position papers that the candidates put out? You know, they all said, well, I have a plan. I Well, my plan or the plan that uh, my staff and I have been... Nobody's reading any of that. Nobody. People vote. Who they, they look at a guy on stage and they say to themselves, all right, he seems trustworthy versus Hillary over there who doesn't, right? That's That's how you do it. That's how you make your choices. This notion that everyone is sitting around saying, well, when Ben Carson says he's going to lower the deficit, like you went and said, all right, I'm going to pull out his 50-page plan or his 500-page plan and read it. Nobody's got time for that. These guys go on to argue that that American voters are just simply dumb enough to buy into what they call Mr. Carson's paranoia, and the writers say this is a pretty pathetic state of affairs and indicates a breakdown in our candidate selection process. It's time to rein it. You know, we've had candidates elected in this country under slogans such as Tippy Canoe and Tyler too. Very catchy. Didn't tell you a gold dying thing about what they were going to do once they were in public office, of course, but it was catchy. And we, we likely had a far more literate population at the time. So whenever I hear people whine like this, I start to wonder, what are their motivations? The writer says only politics focused on reform rather than paranoia can lead us out of the morass. Yeah, okay, well, they're not even explaining what reform is. Reform to me means... Get rid of all of this unnecessary government spending and eliminate all of these deficits and and the overall national debt. To them, reform means getting rid of certain candidates they don't like. And I went down here and discovered this. One of these men is the director of Common Trust. The other is CEO of Crispin Solutions, a public affairs and communications consulting firm and co-founder of Common Trust. And they submitted this editorial, guest writers today, to the Washington Examiner. Who are they? Well... They're K Street lobbyists. Yes, inside the Beltway guys who are trying to tell the rest of us we are too dang dumb to know what's good for us. And if we would just simply listen to them, why, everything would be hunky-dory. You could all vote for uh, for either Jeb or Hillary, and Wall Street will continue to run the country. And they'll continue shipping your jobs overseas. Won't that be great? 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. I believe Chris Anderson is going to be joining us shortly. If he's riding his bicycle in today, he's got to be a bit on the <clears throat> soak side, but I believe he's going to be joining us in just a few minutes. It's 46 at 20 minutes after 9.